Hello, everyone. Welcome to a seasoned perspective here at Razzle Cannabis Broadcasting Network. It's a pleasure and honor to be here today with one of the most amazing veterans who served our countries. We're going to have Leo Bridgewater on with us and right after a wonderful word from a kind sponsor. Apricot Analytics is a full-service product quality lab for cannabis testing and CBD and hemp testing. They have over a decade of analytical lab experience and have been working with cannabis products since 2005. Apricot Analytics understands the needs of cannabis and hemp producers because they were producers themselves. They know the challenges, the frustrations, and the dreams of cultivators and manufacturers. They get it because they've been there, and they're here to help. Apricot Analytics tests your products for the good stuff, like THC uh, and CBD concentrations, and helps you identify any of the bad stuff, like pesticides, mold, bacteria, and heavy metals. For more information, go to apricotanalytics.com, or to learn more about their current investment opportunity, go to the Razzle Investment Marketplace at razzle.com. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today on A Seasoned Perspective, a look at the culture, the history, the industry, and the heartfelt people and the patience of cannabis. I'm here today to honor somebody who I feel has made a difference in our cannabis community. Leo Bridgewater, a veteran, a father, and an associate with the Cannabis World Congress and education group is here with us today and he's all the way out there on the east coast welcome leo thank you for your time today girl if i was white i'd be red from blushing thank you for that oh. <laughs> <laughs> i could go on and on about your accolades i am so blessed because uh leo and i have known each other now for a few years right mm -hmm. traveling around trying to educate and spread the good word so Tell us, how have you been? How has it been for you during the pandemic, Leo? Oh, wow. You know, well, first of all, Kiko, thank you for having me on. And hi, everyone. Again, I'm Leo Bridgewater. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer for CWCB Education. Um, you know, it's interesting, you know, uh, the COVID-19 has forced me to uh, dot a lot of I's and cross a lot of T's. And so in the doing of that, <laughs> I, uh, I'm having to, uh, uh, come across and, you know, it's, it's forced me to organize and, and become, you know, a good kind of busy. Well, first of all, I guess I should say we should let everybody know who you are and your background. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, I already know, but not everybody else is as lucky as me. Well, thank you, Kiko. Amongst other things, I am also the National Director of Veterans Outreach with Minorities for Medical Marijuana. Um, I've testified in Senate Committee to have post-traumatic stress disorder added as a qualifying condition to the New Jersey Medical Marijuana Program. And back in 2016, uh, then-Governor Chris Christie signed our, our bill in the law. And so uh, that was the, the one event that kind of made that kind of like put me on the map, sort of say, um, on, on, uh, as well as outside of New Jersey. Um, because back then, you know, PTSD was the only mental health, uh, you know, condition that was allowed in the medical marijuana program. And so, you know, um, just like then, you know, four years ago, I see a lot of the conditions being right for a, a, a more significant change happening four years later. I know. So a lot came through when you had you spoke before that committee there in New Jersey. And yeah. right now, I mean, you are doing a lot of education to veterans to let them know how to utilize the medicine for themselves. And and how is that going for you? Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, your veteran population is a microcosm of the rest of the country. And what I'm, what I'm realizing, what, uh, what I realized early on, before we even got the bill through, was that um, there's power in that veteran voice. You know, when I'm inside the state house or I'm talking to different committees, because I'm a veteran, they talk to me different than they talk to you. You know, um, and, and, and I realized that, you know, by this is one of those things, particularly when it comes to post-traumatic stress, that the veteran community and the civilian community are running actually in parallel because people had this thing where they thought PTSD was just a veteran only thing. And I'm like, 
Mm -hmm. Well, I live in Trenton, New Jersey. And I know if you go from one end of Stuyvesant Avenue to the other, you can come back, you can end up with PTSD. So I, I, I didn't, I, I wasn't making that distinction. And so I realized by just virtue of, by fighting from the veteran perspective, the, the, the change would impact the, our community, our country as a whole. So in those aspects, you know, being able to speak on it from a veteran perspective, it tends to lend a little more validity to the situation when you're talking to those lawmakers and they're actually trying to consider things. And at PTSD at this time, Leo, I know a lot of people who are having COVID PTSD and the anxiety. PTSD. Yeah, PTSD. Yeah, the, yeah, and the anxiety, the depression, it's all coming for so many people. And, you know, I feel that we need to have a lot more education about it because there has been a stigma about any mental illness issues and I I think that we if we talk about it more bring it about and let people know that everybody from all walks of life are suffering from this uh, debilitating situation well you know Kiko it's interesting because this COVID thing has brought to light a lot of the things I mean we, we've been doing we, we got years in now at this point right Kiko in plural terms right and there are things that you and I have said years ago that actually need to be said again today. Yes. We have a brand new audience, you know, and the reason being is because, you know, first of all, the entire world now qualifies for a medical marijuana uh, card, depending on what- It's essential. Yeah, we, we, we they, they, first we were non-essential, then we became essential. You know, they figured out, I even figured out why, like here in New Jersey, you know why liquor stores were essential? You know why they became essential during a pandemic? So that people wouldn't commit suicide. That, like, now, seriously. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 was the, that was the thing. So that people, because people had to be sheltered the whole nine yards. And it was the same thing. Because you had people who have been locked up and made to sit still inside with their abusers. You see what I'm saying? You have people, the anxiety is through the roof. You know, I mean, you see what, you know, we have people who are, you know, look at Sturgis and look at all these different, you know, things because people are not there. And lo and behold, our industry just happens to be pandemic proof because we weren't hurting in terms of those of us who were already doing it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Your dispensaries and all that we kept, they, they were, they, people were buying up. Yes. So, it, it's it's and, and then and, and let's be perfectly honest here you know um this country wrote a check a three i'm sorry this country wrote a three trillion dollar check a couple of months ago and none of us in our industry get any of that money in terms of no but no. you know what's interesting kiko what they sure don't going to ask us to help pay it back oh. you know they want like 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 in in my state the governor uh, 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 opened up the books. We like twenty billion dollars short on the on the budget. We, we our budget is screwed. Okay, now it just so happens in the state of New Jersey, right before COVID, uh, they they put this on the ballot. So we are voting for adult use come November, right here in the Garden State of New Jersey. And I think that it's been medical use now for at least what three years? Ten years. 10 years, but yep. I think the dispensaries didn't open up till just two years ago. No, dispensaries have been open. No, the dispensaries have been open up for six years, six, seven years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, you have to understand, we are only in year three in the recovery of eight years of Chris Christie. Okay. You, you have to understand the New Jersey medical marijuana program was something he inherited. It was one of the last acts of Governor Corzine. Oh, y'all not going to reelect me? Legal. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, everybody knows Chris Christie hates Canada. Hates Canada. Yes. Okay. He so did. During his entire, or does. Yeah, during his entire administration, he did everything he could to, to, to uh, undermine it. Right. He held it back quite a bit. And it was so sad to see that happen. Because he was hurting the people, his people who really needed it there. Right. 
so nobody so so when you look at we went from seven thousand and some change when he left to now we're like almost at eighty thousand and god knows how many more you know that was the last count i was at 70 something thousand you see what i'm saying and yes. mind you the goal is to get to two hundred and seventy thousand because we have a population of nine million people kiko and we have we, we get 100 million visitors a year. If New Jersey were to legalize for adult use, we leapfrog everybody and we go straight to number two behind California. And I'm sure you'll have, a well, where you're located at, I'm sure you'll have a lot of visitors from New York and the other states around there. Exactly. I live in Trenton, New Jersey, Kiko. So that means I am 35 miles from Philly and 60 miles from New York City. And New York City is the number one cannabis consuming city in the world. And so should the state of New Jersey fall for adult use, we go number two behind California. We leapfrog everybody. We're projected yeah. to be somewhere between 1.6 to $2.2 billion a year, two years after legalization, if done correctly. So the problem that we have now is that we went to a ballot referendum which historically for people of color in the industry, ballot referendums have been terrible for us because ballot referendums takes the people out of the dot and other I's and across and other T's. You know, he, here's something, Leo. I mean, you are part of the um, uh, Marijuana for a Medical Group with by, started by Ro amazing Roz McCarthy. Um, how is it for you right now during this pandemic and being a person of color? I, I you know, as we know, hello, I'm a minority too. So I'm very sensitive to how it is for my brothers and sisters out there. And I always put out energy to protect us all in this. And how has it been for you and getting your word out there and the acceptance of what you're sharing? Well, we happen to be, you know, I, I, you know me, Kiko, I don't mince words. So No, you, you know, don't. We, we, so, so I'll just keep it all the way 100 then. You know, you know we the flavor of the month right now. You see what I'm saying? We were the flavor of the month before we even, before the co walking into the COVID thing. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, it's a matter of at this point, what COVID did was COVID, COVID, the COVID uh, crisis, it actually was the unofficial cutoff point for the first generation uh, cannabis entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. That's, it, it, you know, it, like, I, and, I, and I'll tell you why. I was recently talking to the uh, assistant commissioner for the medical Mar New Jersey medical marijuana program. Uh, and he and I were talking about, um, you know, having a, a social distancing meeting. And he's, and I said, uh, he said, I said, well, you know, Jeff, we could do it. Da, 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 da. He says, okay, cool. And this is what caught my ear, Kiko. He said, um, sure, let me get my next assignment. And as soon as I find out, I'll, I'll hit you back with some, some dates. So I said to him, next assignment, what do, you, what do you mean next assignment? And he told me that he was currently running the New Jersey, the, one of the field, the Atlantic City Field Hospital. And so I said to him, wait a minute, what, what are you doing running a field hospital? And he said the governor had allocated all assets and personnel to fighting COVID. So that means, Kiko, it wouldn't matter if I had $100 million right now. If I filled out an application and took it around the corner to the Department of Health to drop it off, ain't nobody in the building working Nobody's to there. take it. There's nobody to accept that application. There's no inspectors to go and, 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 and give you permitting for anything. They, if you were at the Department of Health, you are either working in a field hospital a testing site or a lab so when and that's what Earl and this was months ago when we had this conversation and that is how I fully understood the magnitude of this COVID thing so when the governor of New Jersey said all hands on deck he wasn't lying he meant all hands on deck and is it making a difference though I mean is the pandemic slowing down for you in New Jersey I think it is isn't it you, you, you know what not mad at him, rightfully so, under the circumstances, right on, Phil, under the circumstances, that, but it was just, as a civilian. It was know, shocking that, to you. 
right. Just that was how I like to hear him. And he said it so matter of fact, which let me know just how busy they really are. It didn't. And, and so that told me those of us who are already doing it, are going to have to be the ones to do it for everybody else in the beginning. Not until we, you know, not until this whole, because right now we are still in, we're, we're currently in the, in the process of this COVID thing. We ain't on the other side yet. This, 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 this COVID thing ain't over yet. We still don't know what the collateral damage has been from this. You know, like we're still, we're, we're currently in we're the, still in the right midst in of, the heart of, of this right thing now. playing itself out. Since 2008, California Lightworks has been guided by a vision focused on the research, design, development, and manufacturing of state-of-the-art commercial LED grow lights and automation equipment for greenhouse and indoor horticulture. By applying the latest advances in high-efficiency, solid-state lighting, and controls technology, their team provides worldwide growers new grow lights that deliver clear benefits at a competitive price. Backed by their solid reputation for standing behind their products, California Lightworks also offers industry-leading warranties on all their commercial grow lights. To learn more about California Lightworks, go to californialightworks.com, and to view their current investment opportunity, please go to the investment marketplace at razzle.com. So, Leo, with the work that you've been doing and in, in educating and sharing out there, tell me a little bit about any of the patients that have actually benefited from your um, great outreach. Well, you know, when I first got into the New Jersey Medical Marijuana Program, that was back in 2014, uh, 2014, 2015. So between then and now, we uh, especially once we got post-traumatic stress disorder added as a qualifying condition. And then uh, the new governor, Phil Murphy, was elected. And then he uh, he enacted executive order number six, which literally expanded the New Jersey medical marijuana program to make it much more accessible. Uh, he took it from, like, if you're someone who are, uh, if you're a senior citizen, a veteran, or on any kind of government assistance, then it now only costs you twenty dollars to enroll into the New Jersey Medical Marijuana Program. You know, um, it, it uh, you, the number of times you have to renew. You know, um, and they expanded the number of conditions, qualifying conditions as well. Anxiety was uh, added. You know, a lot of different conditions. So it's been it's evolving in such a way that we went from. A uh, little under, you know, a little over 7,000 to now we're at 70 something. Last count it was like somewhere between 75 and 80,000 people. And, 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 and I'm quite sure after the, they cut the lights on with, with, from this COVID thing, that it's going to be an even bigger number. You know, you were sharing with me some statistics there about Philadelphia. Can you share with our uh, listeners, our viewership on that? Yeah, so I'm working with uh, a vet, another veteran colleague of mine named Sean Wilson, and he has the uh, Vets in the Hood. Uh, it's a 501c3 geared to uh, training other veterans how to help, ha training veterans to help other veterans mm -hmm. access, learn, and be educated on their VA uh, benefits. Uh, right now, the population in the city of Philadelphia is over 100,000. And there are only, for 100,000 veterans, there are only three counselors. <laughs> so the, the idea... That, that gets me right here. Yeah, you know, and so the idea, and you know, you have veterans, and listen, Kiko, there are veterans all through the city of Philadelphia who have no idea that they have certain benefits available to them. So there's a, there's a serious, there's a very serious... Um, uh, there's no need for a lot of people to be suffering in ways that they don't have to. There's some relief there. They just don't know what what's available to them. So f futuristically, we need to have a lot more outreach and a lot more education available to people, to veterans, so they could share this information. Correct. And that's, that's in the hood. And 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 our podcast, Smoking Heroes, is looking to remedy. It's looking to go directly at that. When do you think your podcast will be uh, coming up then? The first episode is going to be in September. We're, we're shooting for September. Okay. Yeah. So be on the and lookout. We're going to send you all the smoke information. Smoke in the hood. 
Uh, no, Smoke and Heroes. Oh, Smoke and the Heroes are the other one. Is, the Philadelphia group is very sorry. Uh, and then Smoke and Heroes. Like, you know how you have Smoke and Mirrors? You know, right. Now you have Smoke and Heroes. <laughs> and, you know, if people want to get a hold of you, how would they do that, Leo? Oh, it's easy. Everything for me on all social media platforms literally is Leo Bridgewater. Leo Bridgewater on Instagram. There's only one of those. Then, you know, everything. And listen, Kiko, that was not by design. That's just, you know, it, it's one of those things that kind of actually worked out for me. But it's why my son thinks I'm, my, why my oldest thinks I'm corny. <laughs> well, you certainly have been the bridge over troubled waters to soothe the soul of so many people, Leo. And I know here at Razzle, we really want to honor and and thank you so much for your service and every other person out there who's been a veteran, how much we appreciate them. And also for the soldiers who are in service at this time, they are going through a lot too. And I just really want to have our country, our nation, and this community know how much we need to respect and honor our veterans. So thank you so much, Leo. I, I really felt so honored to be able to have you on the show with us here today at a seasoned perspective and know that your words are making a difference and your actions are creating a pathway to so much more light and enrichment for people's lives. So thank you so much. You know, Kiko, I, I got to be honest with you. You know, I, I, I hold you in, in, in the highest of regards. So you have no, you, you know, to hear you say these things to me, it means you have no idea how much it means a lot to me hearing that coming from you. Um, you know, I, people don't get you in the ways that I do. And so <laughs> able to, uh, to be able to, you know, at least give, give a little bit of insight or a little bit of a behind the, behind the scenes uh, idea of how we talk when we're amongst each other, you know, it's, 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 this is awesome. So I love you. And I thank you. For I love being you. My friend for being my mentor, being my sounding board, allowing me to be vulnerable with no judgment. You know, thank you for being that, that ear, you know, just thank you for being that calmness in the, in a, for me at times in a, in a world where things are just going super crazy. And then I see you and it makes me stop, you know, I think that's the best part about you. I breathe, I breathe deeply for you, Leo, every day. And seeing that smile, I knew it would be um, a joy for me at this moment. So thank you so much. Again, we are Razzle Cannabis Broadcasting Network. My name is Keiko, and I'm here with a lovely person, Leo, for a seasoned perspective. May this time together share light with others out there. Thank you again, Leo. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Take care.